Okay, kids, we are back, and you are looking at Lisa Matuska, and she is a second grade teacher in Chicago, Illinois, at Gonzalez Elementary School. How you doing, Lisa? I'm good. Good. How are you? Super, super. Uh, you kids, I got to know Lisa when she was your age. Um, she came to our soccer camp, Marauder Soccer Camp, came to many summers, worked in the camp many at, for as a gopher, as a staff coach, and all of that stuff. And then she went on. Tell us about yourself, Lisa. So after Marauder Soccer Camp, um, I spent pretty much all my summers at Marauder Soccer Camp in um, high school in Florida. And when I graduated, I came up to Chicago, Illinois for college. And I had followed my sister, Nicole Matuska, who you guys have heard from, I believe. So she was at here in Chicago. I followed her because that's what little siblings sometimes do when they miss their older siblings. Um, and after four years here in college, I graduated and <laughs> my sister was in Morocco, which she probably talked about. Maybe you guys knew that. And I followed her again, so traveled to Morocco um, to live with her. In college, I studied uh, international studies and journalism. And so when I graduated, I was very interested in doing journalism. I was also doing some journalism once you graduate, isn't super self-sustaining. And so I was doing a lot of little jobs. Um, but I did a lot of radio journalism. So I worked at the public radio station here in Chicago. Um, and then I did something called freelancing, which is basically you go and do whatever story you want and send it to whoever will pay you for it. And then it gets on the radio and pay you by the story. So I did some freelancing in Morocco, where I was with my sister. And then I moved to Poland, where my family is from. My family's Polish. And I did freelancing from there. Um, and then I came back to Florida and then I came back to Chicago, kind of where I had a lot of connections, a lot of contacts, and I did more freelancing here. Um, in the freelancing, I was working actually at an after school program in Chicago schools called Girls in the Game. And it's a program that, um, works with girls after school to get them doing different sports, um, a lot of self-confidence, a lot of, um, team building, teamwork stuff. And it was really great. And it to see a little bit into the public school system and how the schools work and while I loved journalism I felt like teaching was something that was a calling to me because I loved working with the kids I loved the progression of it whereas journalism you create put all your energy into some nice polished thing and then you send it off with the teaching every single day day in and day out year after year really working towards something not only for yourself but for the kids so I got into teaching here in Chicago um, through some of my travels during college, I was in Bolivia and I took Spanish. And so I teach right now in a second grade bilingual classroom where we speak, um, about 70% Spanish, 30% English, um, students are speaking Spanish at home. So they're kind of transitioning to be bilingual at the end of their graduation from eighth grade. And so our schools go, our, um, schools here go from kindergarten to eighth grade. So, um, they stay at one school at Gonzalez all through that time. Um, and then biggest update of my life is that I just had a baby. So I have a six-month-old named Lucas. Um, he's currently asleep, but he is a whole nother challenge. Very excited to take on. <laughs> that's so cool. What a great story. And it sounds like it's a story that's just beginning. Uh, yeah, for sure. So it'll be awesome to see what happens with Lucas and all that stuff. But let me ask you this, Lisa. Um, what do you remember about PE when you were a kid? I remember really liking PE. Um, and one thing I do remember is that there was sports that I didn't really like. I liked most sports, but softball being one that I wasn't particularly keen on. But when we played softball during PE, I just, I had so much fun. And I was always surprised. I was like, oh, it's softball, I don't like it. But like whenever we play it, I just, I think I really got into it because it was the community around it. You know, it was the um, the way we learned. We got to do different roles on the softball field. Um, we really got into play, playing that, that sport with my friends was so fun. Um, the two other things that really jump out at me, I remember the most fun, just because it was so unique, I think, was those uh, square kind of like boards that had the wheels under it, and you sit on the board, and then somebody pushes you. Yes. I don't know if they do that yes, anymore. Yes, we do. <laughs> It was, uh, it was so novel. Nobody had one at home, so it was just like a little sit-on skateboard. And then the last thing I remember was um, it was Florida. I went to uh, elementary school in Florida. It was a super rainy 
day, one of those Florida rains with lightning. It was just so terrible. And we had our locker rooms where we changed into one of those um, kind of like temporary built building structures. And the boys were on one side and the girls were on one side and there was a wall and the wall had a, a gap on the top. And so my PE teacher on this rainy day, then just sitting inside and I know, reading books or coloring something, we turned our locker room into like this huge volleyball game where we would th- like throw the ball over. And so the boys couldn't see the ball coming, but when the ball would come over, they'd have to either catch it or hit it before it hit the ground. If it hit the ground, we got a point. And if it hit the ground on our side, they got a point. And I just like thought it was, it was a very creative way of using a very dreary, bad situation of all that um, rain. It was so fun. So That's awesome. PE has that magic and can be that magic. What's PE like at your school? Um, at our school, PE, so Chicago is very cold <laughs> during uh, a lot of times of the year and most of the school academic year. Um, so we have PE in our gym. Um, when it is nice outside, they go outside. And actually, our school has a nice soccer field, uh, a turf field where the kids can play. Um, and I know that they cycle through different – uh, sports that they teach the kids about, but the one thing I heard my second grader say that they loved the most was um, when they did sta- stations. Were basically around the gym. There was different kinds of uh, exercises. Um, a lot of them involved tumbling and rolling and um, like gym mat. I never actually watched a lot. Oh, and some of them involved dancing. I know, um, and the kids just loved it. And I think it was just high energy really fast changing, really high interest activities that station around. Um, so I know that the young kids really like those and the older kids do a lot of uh, different rotations through sports. Um, and then I know that they do the presidential fitness tests. Mm-hmm. You guys have that? We have Where something they... called fitness gram, so it's similar. Okay, so yeah, they, sometimes you hear them talking about having to do the um, running back and forth before the thing beeps. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we have that. Like, some kids don't. Um, I think it's kind of hit or miss with some kids. But um, it is like, there is a little bit, fair amount of goal setting. Um, so I think that's good. That's interesting. That's interesting stuff. Uh, so you've, it's interesting that you've been to Bolivia, Poland, Morocco. Did you have occasion to pick up on what PE might have been like in those places? Did you know anybody or any... Do you have an awareness of that? Um, I know that in Bolivia, I remember uh, there was a lot of um, a lot of soccer being played, obviously, um, and I think that a lot of the sports were around um, soccer. And but I do remember that there was uh, there was younger grades because I lived with a family that had a young, really young girl, and they had these routines, and the routines were very cool too. And so there was um, cultural dress and different dances and that I, I assume were done in e class or part of a, some kind of physical physical education um in the other countries i know in morocco and we'll probably talk a little bit about this um it was really interesting the dynamics between the different gender but um one thing i know that was incredible to watch was um the the groups that she worked with and a lot of the groups the girls were going outside and playing just like the boys were um, when there was cr- spaces created to let girls play outside and, you know, whether they were covering themselves completely or just had a, um, a hat on or something, they were playing just like the boys. And it was a very empowering thing because it hadn't always been like that in that country. Um, and I think in general, in Latin America, too, there sometimes is a divide between the opportunities that girls have to play in, um, versus boys. And it seems like PE is a good place where has that opportunity and whether that continues after they're out of school is a question of how society really is like valuing women playing sports and stuff so um i think pe seemed like a really good equalizer of countries for giving kids those opportunities i think both you and nicole would have had trouble in uh, growing up in a place like that Um, yeah (laughs) so uh i mean i remember both of you at camp uh just being first of all excellent soccer players, just as good as many of the boys that were in the camp, and uh, and in fact, better than most of the boys that were in the camp. And uh, did, what do you remember about being at Marauder Soccer Camp? I remember at Marauder Soccer Camp being, the whole week was kind of um, a buildup, and every day was one part of this story that was being created over the um, 
and you were a big part of the story. Every camper had to contribute. The coaches were such amazing leaders, and by leaders, I mean not just telling you what to do, but really letting campers experience. So um, you were the ones that made your team name. You were the ones that decided uh, what kind of cheer you were going to do. Um, if there was a rainy day, creative, super fun activities to do on that rainy day. Like a rainy day wasn't something where you come to camp and you're like, oh, it's raining today. It's terrible. But there was just always something great to do. And I was a big credit to the coaches. And becoming coach, I realized how big responsibility it was to um, kind of lead in this way, to not lead in a way where you're kids, okay, we're going to do this, this, and this, but lead in a way where the great ideas are coming from the kids and you're there to kind of, you know, make them happy. Well, that's that's so interesting to hear you talk about this. Now, one, my personal goal uh, is to make every day at Cypress Woods like a day at Marauder Soccer Camp, to make it be like that. And that kind of leads to what um, the way we do exercise. So we don't really just do, you know, jumping jacks. I mean, sometimes we do, but actually recently we took all the music away. We had no music February. So we just took all the music away just so that kids could experience what other schools did, right? Yeah. And they were couldn't wait for March 1st to come. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, but we, we have the music, uh, and, and, what I've, and I know you've seen it. So what I want you to do, Lisa, if you would, is just to react to, to what you saw the kids doing and your impression of it. Well, my first impression, um, I think the video started with a few kids doing a dance and I was like, wow, these other kids who are crouched down are very attentive, you know, like they're being very respectful to the kids doing this dance. Little did I know that every child crouched down at some point would then get up and and participate. Um, And the length of the program was really impressive to me as well as, yeah, all of the kind of unity among the people who were dancing and also just um, the excitement for it, you know, because I know that, I mean, even in the classes that I teach, um, during PE classes, there's kids who, you know, dancing is everybody's favorite thing. <laughs> and so, um, but I didn't really see any kids just like, you know, forget this, I'm not going to dance. Or, it seemed like whether it was favorite thing or not, it was something that everybody had their place and everybody was participating Um and I do appreciate, I really enjoy, I love dancing. Um, my husband is someone who doesn't really like dancing, but when there's an occasion, when there's other people doing it, and when there's kind of like a party going on, or like um, when it's for a purpose, then he actually he enjoys it, I think. And so I think it kind of has that power. And I saw that dance, the power of dance, that video, that it was um, kind of a unifying factor. That's beautiful. Uh, we We have had some absolutely magical moments at PE class where you know we'll have a hundred kids out there and Mm -hmm. every single one of them is on and the only we're just doing it for each other and with each other we're not doing it for a grade or we're not doing it for an audience it's just fun to do and it's really good as a matter of fact uh, one time we had uh, Martin Grammatica came to our school to observe the kids and he, you know, and he watched and he, he talked to the kids afterwards and he said, uh, that was so exciting that I, I've rarely felt that much excitement, but it reminded me of being in the locker room before the Super Bowl at mm-hmm. when we went to win the Super Bowl. That's the mm-hmm. same feeling I had, which is yeah. cool. You know that feeling. You just kind of described it like when you're at a wedding or something and everybody's up dancing. It's, it's a feeling. It's hard to put words to. Yeah, uh, we try to get there. We try. It's like what Marauder Soccer Camp tried to be like. <laughs> so, Every day. So, um, question for you now, Lisa, is you've been a teacher for quite a few years. I think seven years, if I'm not mistaken, maybe eight, something like that. Yeah. What do you think PE should be? Um, I think, and I mean, I, I love sports. I love PE. So, it always worked for me. Um sports anything that was physical or sports was always working for me but I do that PE sometimes but I've seen it doesn't work for every kid it's not you know like sometimes PE is presented as this is what you have to do this many of this you have to play the sport and like it and 
Um, I think PE should be an opportunity to um, expose kids to a lot of different forms of being physical, of, of physical activity, of um, within sports realms, but also like individual physical activity or dance or um, physical activity that fits with their interests. And it's obviously like there's so many interests and there's so many ways to um, think about that. But I think it should be a lot of exposure and a lot of, um, I also, another thing I think it should be is like thinking about goal setting. Cause I think a lot of physical activity as you get older is about prioritizing it and putting it, making it work in your life. And so, um, by setting goals and, and making, you know, finding the activity that works with your lifestyle, um, I think is one thing that can be really practiced as a kid. Definitely. Definitely. We, uh, we actually talked about goal setting a lot this year. So you're speaking to some future teachers, some future coaches, maybe future leaders. Um, you were their age, living in the same state, Florida. Uh, what would you say to them? What advice could you pass along to them? Um, that's a good question. I think... Well, let me ask it this way. If any of them wanted to become a teacher, what mm -hmm. would you say to them? I would say to... Find what you're passionate about, because um, teaching could be forms, and so, but, and teaching is, it's a hard job, and so it, it gets, you know, it wears on you, wears on you, but there is really a passion that drives you, um, and as you can tell, Coach Hart, Mr. Hart, I don't know what they call you, Coach Hart, <laughs> Coach Hart um, he's, he's really driven by a passion in his teaching, and probably a lot of your other teachers also, like, you know, you can tell that they're tired. You can tell that sometimes they had a long day, but there's something in them that is continuing to really just teach with all heart, and that's this passion that they have. And so what, find out what that is, and you can teach that to people, whether it's sports, whether it's whether it's math, whether it's books and literature, um, whether it's another language. If you come to learn another language really well, you could teach that to others. Um, so really finding that passion and never really letting somebody tell you that you can't do it um people might tell you like oh you're this type of person and so like oh you, you sh you're really good at this or you should do this but whatever they say is their perception and I think that really however you create your journey your path whatever um you get into that's what kind of person you could be so um kind of like you determine that other people will tell you what they think that's great but it's really what you determine or what you decide just like you've done <laughs> yep. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today. Really Thanks. appreciate it. Take care. All right. Bye. Good luck.